Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome back to another pirate game devlog. In this one, I finally took some time to properly plan out the future of the project, and I started implementing resources. So it's Friday afternoon, and a lot has happened since the last devlog. I've been experimenting with making UDP reliable, which has been a very interesting learning experience to say the least. There's still some issues, but if I manage to figure those out, I might start a new and improved multiplayer tutorial series, but we'll have to see. Aside from that, I've spent the last week doing a lot of brainstorming and planning. On Tuesday and Wednesday, I brain dumped all of my ideas for the game into a text document. That took surprisingly long, particularly to get everything organized in a way that makes some sense. Once all my ideas were no longer floating around in my brain like some kind of terrible soup, it was much easier to see where things needed work, and the core gameplay loop was the main thing. You see, my vision for this project has always been to drive player interaction and PvP because I think that's where the most long-term enjoyment can come from. Every battle will be unique simply because of how different people behave, and so all I really need to do is give players the tools, sort of like a PvP sandbox. That takes very little work and development time, and provides potentially unlimited hours of playtime compared to something like story-driven quests which take a long time to develop but provide limited entertainment. As a solo dev, I need to focus on things that provide more long-term stuff to do, at least for now. The issue is that PvP alone isn't really a game, it's more of a battle simulator. Unless there's a reason to fight other players. Now in a pirate game, the logical reason to fight others is to steal their loot, and so the question becomes what do you do with loot? Because what's the point of stealing stuff from others if you can't do anything with the stolen goods? In many games, loot is typically used to progress by making your character stronger or unlocking new and better weapons but I want to steer clear of that. Ideally, I'd like combat to be a level playing field, at least in terms of gameplay mechanics, for several reasons. First, if players can upgrade gear and become permanently stronger, I would need to put matchmaking systems in place to avoid new players being absolutely stomped by veterans. Not only is this extra work for me, but I also have no idea how many people will eventually play this, and if there aren't enough players of a certain level to match together, that's a big problem. Second, I don't want the focal point of the game to be a grind for better gear. I don't mind grinds in games as long as they're optional for a certain achievement or something. I really don't like games where the main gameplay loop consists of grinding out better gear to feel like you're becoming stronger, only to then reach a new area where you're again underdeveloped compared to everyone else. It's easy to get hooked on those games because getting upgrades and reaching the point where you're able to destroy monsters or players that you really had trouble with before is very satisfying in the moment. However, it has much more to do with how much time you've spent playing than any sort of skill on your part, and afterwards I always wonder what the point was in spending all that time grinding. And third, I want the deciding factor in combat scenarios to be based on how good you are at using your head, your surroundings, and the tools at your disposal, and not how much stronger your gear is. Plus, playing with friends will be a core aspect of this game, and if there's a major power imbalance between players in the same crew, it'll pose problems for matchmaking, but it's also less fun. Feeling like you're useless and constantly being carried really sucks, and being at a disadvantage because your friend is severely underleveled is also a pain. So that disqualifies virtually all forms of so-called vertical progression, including gear upgrades, character leveling, skill trees where you gradually unlock more points, and pretty much any other commonly used progression systems. This leaves what's referred to as horizontal progression, where instead of becoming stronger, you unlock more options. For example, unlocking a new weapon type which isn't inherently stronger but gives you new options in combat would be considered horizontal progression. Though horizontal progression can still provide players with advantages, it's something I'm willing to make use of. Without it, the only remaining option would be cosmetic progression, and that's not very sustainable since most players won't buy items which they don't personally like the look of. Coming back to the issue of what loot is used for, there's very limited options to choose from if I rule out vertical progression, and that's something that has been very much on my mind the last few days. I've had several multi-hour long discussions and brainstorming sessions with people from our Discord server, and that's been super helpful in sorting all this stuff out. Along with being able to purchase cosmetic items to look cool, loot and resources will probably in large part be used to sustain yourself in terms of survival. I want the game to be at least somewhat difficult since PvE that's easy is largely pointless and boring, but of course if it's too hard, it's not fun either. This does mean that the game will probably include a lot more survival elements than I initially thought. Additionally, I'm fairly certain at this point that eventually I want to allow players to build on islands. That way you can use resources to build defenses and fortify islands. Of course other players would then need an incentive to attack that island, 
and perhaps rare resources would be enough to do that, but I may need to come up with something else as well. So the PvE gameplay loop ends up looking somewhat like this. You gather resources, you use those resources to defend yourself and survive, or you trade them for money which you can use to unlock new weapon types and cosmetics. The PvP can come in at pretty much any point in that cycle. Now you might think that this is an overly simplistic gameplay loop, but keep in mind that I'll probably flesh it out and add to it as I go along. Also the main purpose of the PvE side of things is to drive player interaction, whether it's players helping each other out or battling to the death. Personally, all my most memorable experiences with games have come out of interaction with other players, whether it was pulling off insane plays against someone else or collaborating to beat a level or build something cool. This is what I want to focus on and encourage as much as possible instead of the endless grinds that so many other games already offer. I'm really curious if anyone has had really memorable moments like this where other players weren't involved, and if so, how those situations came about, so let me know in the comments. Also, any ideas and suggestions regarding the gameplay loop, progression, or purposes for loot and resources would be greatly appreciated, so feel free to leave those down below as well. Anyways, that's a lot of talk about ideas and theory stuff, so let's move on to some actual progress I've made. In the last devlog, I started working on melee combat, and I didn't get around to adding a blocking mechanic, so I implemented that this afternoon. I thought I was going to have to do a bunch more math to account for which way the defending player is looking, and then comparing that to the view direction of the attacking player, but then I realized I could just use a collider. So now I have a collider in front of the player, which moves with the camera and is activated when you begin right clicking, and deactivated when you end the click. While active, the collider will block the attacking player's raycast, which results in no damage being dealt. Due to the shape and positioning of the collider, it's currently impossible to block attacks coming from beneath you, so I may need to play around with that in the future. Then again, blocking at leg height in real life would be more difficult since you'd need to bend down, so this could potentially work as it is. Honestly, since I do all the testing and recording on one computer, it was probably more difficult to actually record the clips to show this in action than it was to implement the mechanic itself. With that taken care of, and in the interest of getting the core gameplay loop in place, I think I'm going to work on adding collectible resources and an inventory over the next week. So it's a week later now, and normally I don't really work on this project over the weekends, but I didn't get as much done during the week as I wanted, and I was definitely not going to postpone this devlog a third time, so here we are. Anyways, after doing another iteration on my interaction system to make it work with tools and weapons as well, I implemented basic resource harvesting. By last evening that was working, although clients still had no idea when a resource was actually harvested, and you could harvest the same resource object over and over again. This morning I fixed all that, so now when you harvest a resource, the tree or rock will disappear visually, along with its collider, and it can no longer be interacted with. For now I've just turned all the trees and rocks on islands into resource nodes, which means that in theory you can entirely strip an island, so I'm not sure if I'll leave it that way. Maybe in the future you'll only be able to cut down a certain percentage of the trees. There will definitely be more resources down the line like iron and some precious metals, and possibly stuff like rope and cloth for sales as well. However, I'll probably stick to just stone and wood for quite a while, as that's all I really need to be able to properly build out the mechanics surrounding resources. The next step will be to actually make resources drop from these objects when you break them, and since I didn't get around to that, I guess I'll be working on an inventory system in the next devlog. Regardless, I should really wrap this up and start editing, so I'll leave it here for this devlog. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to destroy the like button, and remember to let me know what you think about all the gameplay loop and progression stuff I talked about earlier. Also, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to ensure you don't miss the next one. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.